Hi everyone, my name is Xin Guo. Welcome to my presentation today. Today is my great pleasure to give you all a talk about our new Kratos Super Plus XPS. So before doing that, I want to talk about what is XPS first. So XPS, namely X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, is a surface sensitive technique that uses the X-ray as a source to irradiate the sample and measure the kinetic energy of the photoelectron from the sample surface. And it's also called the electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis. So why it can be used for chemical analysis? Because we can actually relate it to the bandy energy field that is calculated from the kinetic energy. And how could we calculate the bandy energy from the kinetic energy? So we assume the initial state that is seen the original electron configuration. And after photo emission, there would be final state. So the bandy energy is the energy difference between the final state and the initial state. And based on the conservation law of the energy, this is equal to the photon energy of x wing minus the kinetic energy of electron minus the spectrometer, uh, work function of spectrometer, since all the photoelectron would reach the spectrometer and to be measured there. And we also need to add a small term, theta, that describes the relaxation effect associated with the final state. So what kind of relaxation effects there could be? First, there would be a polarization around a localized hole. So after photo emission, a core hole would be created and a positive charge would be existed there. And this could incur a polarization of the surrounding electrons around this core hole and enable them to be ejected with higher kinetic energy. And the second one is there would be a coupling between the core hole and the unpaired valence electron, either localized or delocalized. So this could result in the multiplied splitting of the photo emission peak. And the third one includes the multi electron excitation. So during the traveling of photo electrons, part of the kinetic energy can be transferred to other electrons and enable them to either drop up to the unoccupied energy state or to be ejected as free electron. Those are called shake up or shake off process and it would result in the satellite peak that uh, away from the main photo emission peak. And there could be also the surface or bulk plasma that is excited by the photoelectrons. And the fourth one is from the phonon excitation. So not only the energy transfer to other electrons, but part of energy would be transferred to the thermal vibration of the light use. That would result in the shift of the photo emission peak to the higher binary energy site. And after knowing that how to do the chemical analysis, so what kind of information we can obtain from the XPS? In general, we would obtain a spectral like this. So this is the intensity of the photoelectrons versus either the binary energy or the kinetic energy. So we can identify the elemental information directly according to the specific, the bandy energy level that is characteristic to the specific element. And we can also find out the chemical state of this specific element by doing the high resolution scan. And we could calculate the relative composition of this constituent within the surface region. And we could also find out the co-level and valence band structure. So how could we do this? Uh, for valence band structure, we need to know the density of state. 
within the wavelength band range. So the photo emission intensity is actually proportional to the integral of this equation. At the times the average cross section for all states J at energy level E, at the times the density of state for electron in the initial configuration, at times the density of state in the final continuum states. And those terms overloaded with the Fermi distribution function that describe the probability we find an electron in certain state at energy level E. And those terms are further convoluted with either Dolenson land shape or Gaussian land shape due to stated contributions that include actually the answering source land waste that can be described by Dolenz function, the natural land waste caused by the lifetime of Hoho that can be described by Lorentzian function, and also the energy spectrometer with energy dispersed that can be described by the Gaussian function, and also the thermal broadening of the lattice vibration that can be described by Gaussian function. So by knowing this expression, we can derive the density of state in the initial configuration reward state from the photo emission tape. So what can XPS typical do? As we already know what kind of information we can obtain from XPS. So here I show some example. The first one is a survey spectrum for the inorganic compound. As we can see, all elements existed in the compound would be identified from the survey spectrum. And we can also calculate the atomic concentration based on the intensity of the photo electrons and the relative sensitivity factor. And we can also find out the specific chemical state for the element. For example, this is carbon-wise higher resolution scan in PET. And uh, this LAN envelope can be deconvoluted into three peaks. And as we usually see, the carbon-carbon peak that we at bending energy around 284.6, it also usually used as a reference to do the calibration. And with increasing oxidation, we observe the C carbon oxygen single bond at bending energy around 286 and CO double bond at energy level 288. So that tells us the exact the carbon state inside this polymer molecule. And likewise, we, we observe the CO double bond for oxygen-wise that on the lower bending energy side and the CO single bond on the higher bending energy side. So not only that, we can also see the XPS measured valence band. Here comes an example of the valence band measured by XPS for cellulose. So as we can observe here, the black curve is a measured curve by XPS. So the force peak around 7 EV is mainly contributed by oxygen to P. And the peaks between 15 and 20 EV are contributed by both carbon and oxygen. And the last peak with the darkest intensity is mainly contributed by oxygen to us. This measured valence band agrees very well with the calculated spectral by the density function theory with only a small shift around 1.5 EV. And we can also see the partial density of state that calculated here, indicating the specific contribution from respect, respective elements. So not only we can use XDS, analyze those information on polymer materials, we can also use XDS to analyze metals, semiconductors, glass, ceramics, and many more, as long as they are vacuum compatible. And in terms of functional property, we can analyze both conductive and non-conductive materials, and even magnetic materials. 
So for non-conductive materials, that would be usually charge induced shifting. That due to the accumulation of the surface charge on the sample. And how could we minimize that? With XPS, there would be usually a charge neutralizer equation. That is either low energy electron beam or low energy ion beam. And we can also analyze the magnetic materials because we can in operate an instrument in the electrostatic mode with the magnetic field turned off in the instrument. That would reduce the magnetic field generated from the magnetic samples and the interference from the instrument magnetic field. So now I want to introduce the new Kratos Super Plus XPS. What it is? The new SuperPlus XPS is the newest generation in the Axis series that manufactured from Kratos Analytical. It has two primary features. First, it has high sensitivity and high energy resolution. That means it can detect the light element with excellent signal to noise ratio, even they are at reduced or small concentration. It's equipped with dual monochromatic alumina and silver X-ray source that allow us to either probe the surface sensitive information or the bulk property oriented information. It has high energy resolution that can measure a length weight 0.48 EV on the silver 3D by half and 0.408 EV on silicon 2P3 half. It's equipped with bright X monochromatic alumina source that enable us to even focus the x ray beam in a smaller size and enhance the surface sensitivity with the higher intensity per unit area. The second primary feature include its unmatched automated system. So imagine we use the RTS in a conventional way, we need to push the sample rod into the sample analyst chamber to do the measurement there. But now it can be done completely hands off. We can exchange a sample from the load log to a sample analyst chamber now completely automatic with the software. And we can also switch the excitation source automatically with a few clink on the software. And we can do the gas handling for the ion sources that with computer controlled program. And we can modify the configuration such as the uh, ion source, ion size, energy level, etc. So what can Crito Super Plus do in analysis? First, it can give the quantitative XPS image that combined with a small spot analysis. Here I show the example. This is a chemical state imaging on a sample with both iron-rich area and the titanium-rich area. And we can use the small spot analysis with a diameter 27 micron to select the location as we want and then extract the survey spectrum from those locations. So here comes the result of the survey spectrum from both the green region and the red region. So for the red curve that comes from the red region, we can see a large intensity of titanium groupie. And for the green curve that comes from this spot, in the green region, we observe a larger iron 2P intensity and a chromium 2P. And this chemical state imaging is acquired in parallel mode. That means it can image the entire field of view simultaneously without a need of scanning voltage applied. 
and this can acquire the image faster and produce a better resolution less than three micron. And the analysis area we can define with superplus from two millimeters square to twenty to two hundred micrometers square. And the small spot analysis with the smallest diameter, 15 micrometer, can be used. The not only the survey spectra can be extracted from the chemical state imaging, we can also extract the high resolution scan of specific element from it. Here shows another example. For the right region, we can obtain the high resolution scan of the silicon 2P. So basically, the silicon 2P in the right region is mainly from the oxide, according to the bending energy level. But for the small spot from the right, from the green region, we observe a higher resolution scan of silicon 2P include both the silicon from the oxide and the silicon, silicon from the uh, silicon nitride. So with super plus, we can obtain more than just the, the uh, spectral, either the survey spectral or higher resolution spectral. We can also obtain the chemical state imaging and link the spectral with the spatial location as the analysis. And then I want to show the FPS can also do the elemental mapping that's similar to EDX. So here shows another example. This is a chemical state imaging at the bending energy iron 2P. From this, we can clearly see the spatial distribution of iron across this field of view. And likewise, we can observe the titanium that is distributed complementary to the iron 2P. But if we only see these two images, we don't know if they are elemental or they are compound. So if we combine the chemical state imaging with the iron 2P, like we acquire the image at oxygen 1S bending energy that's associated with, with iron oxygen bond, we can observe similar distribution of oxygen to the iron. And likewise, we would observe the same oxygen distribution to the titanium if we uh, acquire the imaging at bending energy oxygen-wise around titanium oxygen bond. So by not only we can do the elemental mapping, but we can also magnify the object we observe. So here shows another example. We can change the field of view in a real time. And this is a two millimeter field of view on the gold grid. And as we observe here, it's ultra low magnification. And if we change the field of view to 800 micron, 400 micron, and 200 micron, and we can increase the magnification to higher level as we observe here. And with super plus, this can even go down to 80 micrometer and acquire each image in shorter time, less than 30 seconds. And we can also stitch the image to a larger analysis area and still return the original spatial resolution depending on which field of view we use to stitch the bigger image. And we can also do the lens scan on the real-time SPS imaging. Here shows another example that is copper grid in 100 micron field of view. And if we draw a green line across two edges of this copper grid, we would observe two photo emission peaks here. And if we measure the distance between the center of two peaks, we can get the dimension of this copper grid, which is measured 25 micrometer here. If we draw another line that is right 
land here across the half edge of this copper grid, we can measure the intensity difference between 20 and 80 percent to get a little resolution less than three micrometer. And here we measured it's around 2.2 micrometer. And we can even go down further to one micron with super class. So not only we can do the chemical state imaging and conventional survey spectral high resolution spectral, we can also do the angle result XPS with new super plus. Here shows an example for silicon on the silicon substrate. And if we acquire the angle result spectral at a zero degree, usually that's the, the photo emission direction normal to the sample surface. And we obtain the bulk sensitive spectrum that weighs elemental silicon 2P in the largest intensity and the oxide silicon 2P in a smaller intensity. If we tilt the sample state further to 45 degree, 50 degree, and 75 degree, we would observe a decreased intensity of silicon 2P from the substrate and the increased silica 2P intensity from the oxide. So by doing it this way, we can probe from the bulk sensitive information to more surface sensitive information using angle result XPS. And we can also calculate the thickness of over layer field by using this equation that describes the ratio between the intensity of silica 2P from the substrate and silica 2P from the oxide is related to the ratio of atomic concentration times the ratio of the inelastic V free pass and times the depth emission function that includes the thickness of over layer, the mean free pass of silica in the silica oxide and the tilt angle function. So if we measure the XPS in angle result spectral at different takeoff angles, we can use this equation to find out the thickness reward state. That gave us a method to get the thickness of the over layer field. And angle result XPS can also give us the non destructive depth profiles, that is, reconstructed by the maximum entropy method. So, what's the basic principle behind this? So, assuming the sample, the multi layered sample, is consisting of the J layers that contain element I at concentration CGI. And we can express the angular dependent intensity as a sum of the intensity from the respective layer for the specific element I. And that intensity is related to the sensitivity factor, the concentration, and the function that includes the thickness of each layer, the angle function, and the mean free pass. So, in general, we would mode the measured angle result by PS data with this equation in least square method that is minimizing chi square here. But in super plus, it introduced a new way. Here is a new term called entropy that is the function of the concentration and the related configuration. If we combine the entropy and the chi square, so now, in order to minimize the chi square, we need to maximize the entropy term and maximize the Q value, which is called the joint probability function. So, with this method, we can get a better fitting that avoid the profile noise generated due to the overfitting of the least square method. And here shows some results. This is a 
multi-layer structure that with configuration like this. And as we can observe, the intensity of hafnium 4F as a function of tilt angle and the intensity of silicon 2P from the oxide and silicon 2P from the substrate uh, are all in a very good agreement with the measured angle result at the spectrum. And we can also observe the carbon wise and oxygen wise have a good trend with the measured angle result at the spectrum. And if we convert this function as tilt angle to function of the depth, we would observe the reconstructed the depth profile that looks like this. And this agrees well with the original thickness and configuration of this multi-layered structure. And of course, we can always do the depth profiling in a conventional way. And with, that is by sparkling with uh, uh, ion, uh, ion P and with super plus is equipped with a powerful argon cluster ions. Here shows another example how we can do the depth profiling with the argon gas cluster ion. This is a multi-layer structure with alternating NPB and alumina Q3 layers deposited on the substrate of silicon. And if we use the argon plus ion, here is 5 keV argon 1000 ions to sputter away the layer and alter the depth concentration. We would observe the spectral looks like this. And as we can see, the green peak that is alumina concentration, agrees very well with the alumina layer, the alumina Q3, and the weight agrees well with the thickness. With a super plus, the ion source can be designed to generate a larger size up to 3,000 items per cluster ion. And we can also accelerate those ions to 20 keV. So we get plenty of options to modify and customize the ion source here. And what benefit to use the argon gas cluster? So the large cluster ions usually would have a small energy, small atom per energy because the energy is distributed over more atoms. And this means the large cluster ions would not penetrate deeply into a subsurface region, and the impact energy would be dissipated quickly and in a shallow region with a top field nanometer. And you can, can remove the surface spatials in a gentle way without significant chemical damage. Here shows an example for the titanium oxide thin layer, thin films. Before sparking, we can observe for titanium 2P, there is a well-defined peak shape at the specific energy level. After sparking by the modern atomic argon ion, we observe a smeared peak shape that the distributed over a wider bending energy range. And not only that, we observe the reduction to the oxidation state from titanium 2, 4 plus to titanium 3 plus and titanium 2 plus. If we use the argon cluster to do the same job, here we use 20 keV, the argon 500 cluster ion. We can see the very written peak shape without a big reduction to the oxidation state. And again, if we use a 5 kV argon monar atomic ion, we observe the smear peak shape. So it's not only about 
probe the depth by the either the angle result at the X factor or the argon cluster ion. We can also probe the bulk property with the silver axiom. As we have already stated, the super plus is equipped with both silver L alpha and the alumina K alpha ring. So what's the benefit to use the silver L alpha? The first advantage is the silver alpha has a higher photon energy. That means the deeper penetration depth and alter the information from more bulk sensitive region. And here shows an example that we use different excitation source to excite this multi-layer structure over layer on the silicon substrate. If we use the monochromatic aluminum K alpha, we would observe the elemental silicon 2P that is made from the substrate has a much lower intensity compared to the silicon 2P from the lower layers. But if we use the silver L alpha and analyze the same region, we would observe an increased intensity for the silicon from the substrate and a smaller intensity from the lower layers. So that gave us the opportunity to focus more on the bulk property inside this multi-layer structure. The other benefit to use the silver alpha is it can shift the OJ transition that is overlapped with specific element. Here shows an example. If we use the alumina K alpha exciting the gallium arsenate doped by nitrogen, we would observe the gallium and OJ transition that is overlapped with nitrogen 1S and it's hard to do the quantification with this spectrum. If we use the silver L alpha to accept, to accept it the same material, we can shift the OJ transition from gallium to much higher bending energy level and get a clean and a sharp peak shape for nitrogen wise. That is ready for the accurate quantification. And then now I have talked about all the main functions for the XDS part. But with Supra Plus, we can always do more with the multi capability of different techniques. The first one I want to talk about is the UPS. The full name is called Ultraviolet Photoelectron Spectroscopy. So similar to XDS, UPS can measure the kinetic energy for the photoelectron, but within a small energy range that is usually below the forming edge, uh, around 100 EV or 50 EV below the forming edge. And what we can obtain from the UPS spectrum, here I show an example. This is a UPS spectrum on the hybrid light bromide cross edge. And the first part we would observe is a valence band structure. So this part, if we zoom in, we can see the more fun details about the valence band. And the second part, mainly from the secondary electron background that caused by the inelastic scattering event. And after that, there would be always a cutoff energy. And this is very important in UPS because if we know the cutoff energy, we can use it to calculate the work function as well. So what's the principle behind this? The cutoff energy is usually the lowest level that can be excited by your wave photon up to the vacuum level, that is with zero kinetic energy. So now we ignore this part. The photon energy can be composed of both the work function and the bending energy part. 
with that relationship, we can calculate the work function is equal to the photon energy of UV minus the bending energy of this part. Here is difference between the cutoff energy and the Fermi level. And if we use the helium one as a UV source, we know the photon energy is 21.22 EV, and we measure the forming edge 0.05 EV, and the car power energy is around 17.735 EV. We can get the work function 3.82 EV for the hybrid light bromide. This is typical value that agrees well with the literature data. And with UPS, we can always do more. So here comes another example. If we only use XDS to save some materials, it might be hard for us to distinguish them. For example, we say the carbon wise for the high density polyethylene, we observe just a single peak around 285. And similarly, we would observe just a single peak of carbon wise for the PTIC. So that would just confuse us. We don't know if we, they are different materials or not. But if we look at in the valence band region that measured by UPS, we observe they look very different in terms of structure. And for the PTFE, the main contribution is made by the fluorine 2 but in the High density BE, we observe the main contribution of wind span made by carbon 2 p So if we combine the UPS with IPS, we can always obtain more information and distinguish the molecules with similar structure and composition. The second one, I want to introduce the ion scattering spectroscopy. What we can use for ion scattering spectroscopy? The principle behind this is like, first we shoot a ion beam with known energy and known mass. We measure the scatter ion at different scattering angle. And based on the conversion law of energy and the momentum, we can get the ratio between the kinetic energy of a scatter ion and kinetic energy of original ion. That's related to the scattering angle and the mass ratio between the scattering item and incident ion. So with ISS, we can distinguish the different elements that existed in the uh, on the sample surface. Here shows an example. The left spectrum shows the ISS measured on copper, silver, and gold. As we can see, they, are, they can be distinguished easily at different kinetic level. And the intensity is related not only the cross section for the spectrum, but also the concentration. And for the right spectrum, we can also observe the oxidation on the bronzing sample using the helium ion. And note that the separation between the oxygen and the copper is much larger than the separation between the tin and the copper, although they have the same atomic weight difference. That means for increasing the atomic weight, there could be a decrease in the mass resolution. So how could we solve that problem? Here shows another figure that tells us the energy decay with different ion source we use. So for helium, it would reach a plateau above 50 atomic weight, but for nylon and argon, the energy ratio still have a big slope between the 50 and the 150. That means 
we can use the argon instead of helium to distinguish some heavy atoms that with similar atomic weight. Here shows a spectrum that we measured on the same grounding sample, but with argon ions at the same energy ion beam. And we observe that that a single peak from the copper is actually two peaks composed of either the copper 63 as a ma major component and also a shooter peak from the isotope copper 65. Last but not least, the super plus is also equipped with reels. So what is reels? Reels, the full name is called reflection electron energy loss spectroscopy. It measures the intensity distribution of reflected electrons as function of the energy loss. And it's very sensitive to the surface electronic structure. And more than 50% of the reflected electrons experience the multiple valence losses. So the discrete loss of energy can actually indicate the different excited atomic states, the coal and valence band transitions, and the material band gap. Here shows an example, the real spectrum on the alumina, silica, thin films. And before annealing, we observe the first onset absorption, that is the start point for generation of electron coal pairs, indicating the band gap value around 6.5 eV. And after annealing, we observe the band gap increase to 7.5 eV. That also tells us the annealing actually can remove the surface defect state that increase the band gap. So reels can also measure the transition state and even hydrogen content. Here shows an example that is reels measured on the list of polymers. As we can first observe for polystyrene and the PET, there are some peaks that from the pi to pi star, the bonding and the bonding transition that indicate mating the homo level inside these polymers. And we can also observe a small shooter peak that is 1.8 EV from the primary elastic peak. And with PTFE, since there are no hydrogen content, we observe no peak here. And with increasing hydrogen content, we observe the increasing intensity for this peak. So why reels is sensitive to hydrogen atom? The mechanism behind this is the, the electron can see the hydrogen. That is part of the energy from the electron would be transferred to the hydrogen atom due to the recording process of hydrogen atom. And with this method, we can quantify the hydrogen content. Here shows another example that is reels measured on alumina to alumina hydroxide. As we can see here, the intensity of this sugar peak is proportional to the hydrogen content inside the specific materials. And of course, we need to calibrate that with a sensitivity factor to accurately quantify the hydrogen content with reels. So now we have talked about all functions the superplus have. Let's make a summary. So we talk about first what is XPS, and then we talk about what an XPS is to do. And we then talk about what features does Greto XDI Supra have? 
basically you can give the IPS analysis is high sensitivity, high energy resolution in automated system. It can give parallel IPS imaging from two millimeter square to 80 micrometer square with one micrometer spatial resolution. And we can use the print-defined small spot analysis from 110 micron to smallest diameter 50 micron. It can do XPS angle resolved analysis with a reconstruction of depth profiling by maximum entropy method. It's equipped with powerful mini beam 6 argon cluster ions that we can use for better depth profiling and sparkling cleaning for soft organic materials. It's equipped with a door monitor chromatic alumina silver x-ray source that can either probe the surface sensitive information or the bulk property information with high energy resolution. And it's equipped with multi-technique capability, UPS, ISS, and RIOs that allow us to explore more useful information that is complementary to XPS. So thank you very much for your attention. That's all I have today. If you have any questions, I can be reached with this information. Thank you.